Hello, and thank you for tuning in again to another conversation with Professor Choi. Today we're going to be learning how to calculate the Pearson coefficient of skewness, plus we're going to learn a little bit about what it is. Now this is a basic formula for the Pearson coefficient of skewness. Now this is uh, skewness, that's a 3. X bar is the sample mean minus the median divided by S, and S is the standard deviation for sample. Now, in order to understand this formula, you need to remember that some of these letters are other formulas themselves. So the x bar here is the average or the arithmetic mean, which is summation of x over n. So you need to calculate that in order to be able to calculate the Pearson coefficient of skewness. Then, the standard deviation, or sample standard deviation, which is this s right here, is square root of summation of x minus x bar square divided by n minus 1. So these two are formulas themselves, and so is the median. There's a way to find it. So in order to calculate this Pearson coefficient of skewness, you need to be able to calculate the mean the median and the standard deviation and then with those three pieces of data you can calculate the Pearson coefficient of skewness. Now before I get into a quick calculation on how to do the Pearson coefficient of skewness let's talk about what do we use it for. Now every time you put data on a number line from smallest number to largest number one of the things that start popping out of the data or not, if you kind of think about the frequency of how many numbers are repeated or so, is the distribution of the data. So data has three basic sort of types of distributions. You get your symmetrical distribution, which basically means that the majority of the data is kind of like congregated towards the center, and the tails of the data are below. So there's the highest frequency of the data is in the center of the data and the mean, the median and the mode are exactly in the same position or very close to each other in the center of the data. I like to think of that by the way. The easiest way to think about this is like you got my head here and I'm looking at my two arms and if the data is distributed like that where my head in the center, most of the data is in the center and then the two tails are kind of thin, that's what we call normally distributed. All right, now a left skewed data is when the mode, being the number that repeats the most, is to the right of the mean. And again, the right means higher number. So I like to think of it as like this. So if I got my head and my head is the mode, and the mode is to the right of the majority of the data, which is my hand, then the data is what we call left skewed. Left skewed. All right, now if instead the mean, which is the center of the data, is to the right of the mode, or you could say the mode is to the left of the mean, okay? So the mode being my head and the rest of the data being to the right, then you see how basically my distribution is this and then flatness that way. So this is what we call right skewed. Okay? Now, remember the mean is the center of the location of the data using the arithmetic mean formula, which is this one right here. Alright? So, when the mean is in this position compared to the mode, that's what we call right skewed. When the mean is in this position compared to the mode, that's what we call left skewed. And when the mean and the mode are in the same position with the median, that's what we call a symmetrical distribution. Now remember, the number itself for the distribution of the data doesn't have to be zero. The number could be anything. So, you know, it could be uh, 75 could be the center of the data. Or um, let's put 75, 75, for example. Or you could have a mean that is 75, but the mode is 80. Or you could have something like where the mean is 75, but the mode is, say, 65. Okay, so this just tells you 
about whether the data is what we call symmetrical, right skewed, or left skewed. All right, now, the Pearson coefficient of skewness, what it basically does is it gives you an idea of the symmetry of the data without you having to do a frequency distribution or a frequency like this so you can see the symmetry of the data with a histogram together with everything else. So this is a sort of quick way of figuring out whether the data seems symmetrical, right skewed or left skewed or positively skewed or negatively skewed, okay? So, if you end up with a skewness coefficient that is close to zero, to the right of that we can say that it is slightly right skewed. We can say here something like moderate right skewed and then uh, we can say here very right skewed or extremely right skewed or severely alright uh, we can say here slightly left skewed or we can say moderately left skewed or we can say uh, severely left skewed or very left skewed or extremely left skewed. Alright, so your Pearson coefficient of skewness is going to move between negative 3 and positive 3 for any data set with 0 being symmetrical, something like this, and Anywhere close to positive 3 being extremely right skewed, anywhere on the left side negative 3 being severely or extremely left skewed, moderate somewhere on here, and then slightly or um, not very right or left skewed or close to symmetrical being in there. Okay? And again, we can use uh, number 1 to put it here, number 2 to put it here, for example, or we can put negative 1 here and negative 2 here. Good so far? So every time we calculate a Pearson coefficient of skewness, we're going to get something like that. All right. So let's calculate a simple Pearson coefficient of skewness. Now remember, all of this stuff you would have had to calculate previously. So let's say that we have, uh, can we calculated our mean for the data, and it was 75. Let's say... Now we get a median for the data at 80 and we get a standard deviation for the data at 20. Okay? So we have our mean for the data at 75, our average is 75, we got our median at 80 and our standard deviation at 20. And remember you would have had to calculate this before already with your data set. All right. So to calculate my Pearson coefficient of skewness, I have to do 3 times x bar, which is 75, or my mean, minus my median, which in this case is 80, divided by my standard deviation, for example, which is 20. Okay, so let's get my trusty calculator and figure that out real quick. Alright, so in this case, I got negative 0 0.75. That's my Pearson coefficient of skewness. Now, my Pearson coefficient of skewness right now falls right here at negative 0 0.75, right there. So, for this data set that I have, that I calculated my mean, my median, and my standard deviation, I can say that it is slightly left skewed, or very close to symmetrical, but not quite symmetrical. Alright, 
I hope you like our lesson for today, learning about the Pearson coefficient of skewness and how you can easily figure out whether data is symmetrical, left skewed, or right skewed by using the Pearson coefficient of skewness. Thank you for uh, watching the videos from Professor Choi. Have a good one.